So we'll just take a moment to uh, find yourself a nice firm seat with your six bones rooted into the mat. Feel your spine lifting your body up. Feel the crown of your head shining toward the ceiling. Just place your hands lightly on your knees. Close your eyes and just take a moment to become present here. back into the room. And we'll just, uh, let's start with Andrew. <laughs> uh, and you too in unison can, can uh, say good morning. No, we'll start with Andrew Gillard. And good morning. Just a, I think I'm ready this morning. Okay, and we'll okay. edit this part out of the, the video. Um, besides the lower back, it's the answer. Some sort of stiffness across the shoulder. Um, what I thought we would do in class today is look at stretching, different kinds of stretching, particularly stretching to relieve pain in the lower back and across the shoulders. So this is, shall be very good. Um, we're going to start off with, I just want to talk just a tiny little bit about stretching. And um, one of the things that I was fortunate enough to learn from a course that I took from a uh, sports minister, Miguel Online, this winter was um, the difference between active isolated stretching and static stretching. And people used to believe that before you did physical exercise, you did these kind of static stretching to stretch out your muscles, and then you did your physical activity, and then there was kind of a cool down where you did short little movements with muscles. Well, now with all the ways they have of filming the body and recording what's going on, they found that that actually is very counterproductive. Um, you can actually injure yourself if you go too far and that your performance can decrease. So what they decided now that you do is you do very um, active, it's called active isolated stretching with specific muscles before you exercise and then you do the longer static stretching after you exercise. Because what they found happens in the body is when you first stretch your muscle and then you hold it in the long static stretch, the body begins to kind of panic, especially if it's first thing in the morning and you're trying to touch your toes, you might find yourself really stiff. What happens is you're not just stiff, but that your body says, whoa, wait a minute, if I stretch any farther, I'm going to hurt myself. So this protective reaction kicks in and the muscle actually stops and contracts and won't stretch out to its full extent. And not only that, that muscle will actually recruit other muscles around to help stop the movement. So while you're trying to stretch out, your body is trying to not let you stretch. But if you do really quick, rapid movements like this, with only a one and a half to two second hold, then the, the muscles are quite happy and your body allows this to happen. One of the um, things that you really shouldn't do is stretch your muscle out like a forward bend and then start bobbing down like these. I learned that in physical education classes do that. And that's apparently really dangerous for your body because you're asking your body to go farther when it's already contracted and saying, I'm not going to go any farther. So we're going to play around with the class today with active static stretching and then, or active isolated stretching. Then we'll do some static stretches at the end and you can see how that feels on the body. Often pain across the back and shoulders is caused by uh, very short muscles being very tight and those are the very muscles that will contract and stop themselves from relaxing if you do the static stretching. So that being said, we're going to start off by taking our right palm, bending the three middle fingers down, and then just curving the hand, and we're going to lightly close the nostril with the thumb. Inhale through the nostril, exhale through that nostril, and then switch fingers, inhale, and exhale. So if you wish, you can just close your eyes, bring your awareness inside, and then just gently focus on this alternate nostril breathing. Allow your own breath to find the pace and the length of the inhale and the exhale. Bring your awareness to your breath. See if your breath feels smooth and easy this morning, or if it's jagged and don't do 
anything to change your breath, just let the gentle flow from nostril to nostril, bring the right and left sides of your body into balance. Complete one more round of inhale and exhalation through both through each nostril. And then allow your hands to rest on your knee. And then just let go of your breath and let your breath come back to nice and even pace. Now for something completely different, let's stand up. Chair. And just place the chair on the mat so it doesn't slide. And the first thing that we're going to do is just become aware of how we're sitting on chair. Sometimes people have this sort of reaction that as soon as you sit on the chair, you kind of immediately slump forward and so you're going to work with the keyboard. So we'll just sit nice and straight on the chair. Um, have your hips quite close to the front edge of the chair, your feet look hipply apart. Feel your sitting bones sinking back and down. Gently pull in and pull up through the abdomen, lengthen your spine. Feel the crown of your head moving toward the ceiling, but keep your chin relatively parallel to the floor. Just take a couple of nice Move through uh, an active isolated stretch sequence that's a seated variation of sun salutation. This is a really nice thing you can do if you're sitting at a desk or you've been uh, working sitting down. You can just kind of push yourself away and go through this very easy invigorating sequence. So we're going to begin by letting hands go down to the sides. And we'll inhale the hands up, look to the thumbs. Bring the arms out to the side, bend forward, let the head fall between the knees, let the arms fall down, touch the ankles, lift the back halfway, lift the head and look toward the window, exhale, fold back down, inhale, the arms out to the side, come all the way up, look to the thumbs, and then pull the energy down to the third eye, to the vision center, to the heart center, and then let the hands fall down to the side. And once more, we'll inhale the arms up, touch the palms, look to the thumbs, open the arms, hinge forward from the hips, let the arms fall down, touching the ankles, Pull up halfway, look to the window. Exhale, let the head fall down between the knees, bring the arms out to the side. Inhale, up. And once more, touch the palms, and then pull the energy down, touching the forehead, the heart, down to the side. And then inhale, up. Side. 
those who are needing help. And this time, as we fold forward, hinging at the hips, imagine there's a ball on your lap, and you're folding out over the ball, and let the hands fall down. Bring your left palm in between your feet on the floor. Take your right arm and turn it up toward the ceiling. Down, change right palm on the floor, left arm up to the ceiling. Down, right arm up, left arm up. Once <coughs> more on each side. Quiet. Take both hands to the outside of the ankles. Inhale, come halfway up, look forward. Exhale, down between the knees. Inhale, let the arms come all the way up. And then palms down to the side. Inhale, the arms up one more time. And this time, pull the energy down to the forehead, the heart, and down to the side. Inhale the arms up to shoulder height. Bring the palms together at the center. And then twist and place the left elbow on the outside of the right knee. Squeezing your palms together, lift the right elbow slightly and turn the torso to look to the side and see the prayer. Take a deep breath, turn back down, release the elbow, around the sitting, opposite elbow to the opposite knee, press the palms, lift the top elbow up to the ceiling, turn the torso for a nice spinal twist. Sweep the hands down. Once more, we'll raise palms. Hinge forward from the hips. Let the hands and arms come to the floor. Let the head come into the knees. Give your head a little nod, yes. A little nod, yes, no. And then very gently come up. Scoop the arms up to the side. Touch the palms. Pull the energy down from the sign to the vision to the heart. And then let your hands rest. Just take a few moments to feel the energy moving through. We're going to do just a little bit more of active isolated stretching to uh, work the very short muscles that attach on the back of the solar plexus. And this is often, these particular muscles and the glutes are often which the muscles that cause lower back pain. So we're going to do pretty much a uh, similar to motion to what we just did, except we're going to open our feet a little bit wider apart, make sure you're sitting comfortably in the chair. Just going to have our hands loose at the side, and we're going to simply bend forward, hold for one second with the head forward, hanging heavy, and then sit back. We're going to do this five times, and do it at your own pace, but move it relatively Pace, remembering that we don't want to hold any part of the pose for longer than two seconds. So we're 
partway through the leg sequence. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the right leg and we're going to put it up over the left thigh. Make sure that your heel is behind, is, has gone beyond, so that the ankle bone is not pressing into your leg. And keep your foot flexed because this will protect your knee. Your knee is a hinge joint that just likes to move in a very specific range of motion. So if you flex your foot, kind of forces the knee to stay in a protected spot. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our hands on either side of the knee and we're going to just kind of brace ourselves with our hands and very gently pull the right shoulder toward the knee. And we're going to do this as a very active stretch, not holding, so that the muscles are continuously lengthening. And so what we're doing is we're preventing the what's called the protective um, muscle reflex, which is a when you start to hold the static stretch in the muscle, the muscle stops the stretching. So the constant movement is keeping me. And then back to the center. This time we're going to wrap the elbow around and continue to bend forward. You'll probably feel this stretch uh, predominantly in the upper gluteal muscle on the right side. And this is one of the muscles that, when it's short and tight, causes lower back pain. So it can cause shoulder pain. And then, just take a moment to let the energy sort of circulate in the body. And then we'll put the other, take the other leg up, hold on to the knee, and then just very gently begin to pull the shoulder toward the knee. If you like, you can gently pull the knee up toward the shoulder as well. Just whatever feels really good for your body. If you feel any pain or discomfort, just back up a bit. We're just asking the muscles to wake up and to begin to extend. And then we'll wrap the elbow around and then pull. And you can feel the stretch translates a little bit higher up. Take a moment to close your eyes. Feel yourself grounded, centered. Feel yourself present on the chair, on the mat. So this mat and this chair is your space for the next part of this hour. So do only what you feel comfortable doing. If you feel any discomfort or pain, just stop or back the movement off a little. So one of the goals that we have, one of the desires that we have when we're practicing yoga is to feel good. So if anything doesn't feel good, don't do it. Okay. So open your eyes. And we're just going to very gently make some small circles with our shoulders. So we're just doing a little bit of a gentle back bend as a counter pose to the forward bending. And just keep your shoulders moving around. You can let your arms get involved. Make the little bits of circles with your arms. And then start making the movements as large as you can. Try to keep your head and your neck relaxed. Make certain that you're not clenching your jaw or tightening. And then come to the with your arms in the front of your body, and then switch directions and go in the opposite direction, making big circles with your 
your shoulders. You should be beginning to feel some little bit of uh, good morning from the muscles along the top of your shoulders. And start making the circles a little bit smaller. Going to do a very slight back bend. If you have any problems or soreness, stiffness in your neck, just keep your chin tipped toward your chest. Uh, I'm going to do a variation where we're going to hold on to the back of your head. So if you'd like to do this, so what we're going to do is move about halfway. So that we're sitting about halfway back in the chair. Feel your sitting bones kind of rooting down into the seat of the chair. And imagine that you are sliding your tailbone toward the back of the chair. So just imagine that you're sliding your tailbone toward the back of the chair. And then just very gently let your tailbone move toward the back of the chair. Inhale your hands up. Tip your chin towards your chest and place your interlaced fingers on the back the occipital bone. And then on an inhale, allowing your tailbone to slide toward the back of the chair, gently push your hips and your belly toward the front, toward the window, and very gently bend backward. Very gently back. Support your head with your hands or keep your chin down. And then come forward, relax. And once more, slide the tailbone back, push the hips forward, come into a nice, gentle, very powerful back bend, hold supporting your head. And come forward. And then repeat this once more. By stretching our neck backwards like this, holding it, we're protecting the neck, but we're also stretching the soft palate and muscles in the front of the neck. And then come forward. We're going to stand up and just step away from your chair. Or just put your chair at the back of your mat and come to the front of the mat. <clears throat> and we're going to do just a little bit of pranayama or breath work. And the breath work that we're going to do this morning is called a ha breath. It's called the ha breath because at the end of it we say ha like this. So what we do is we take our arms. We're going to inhale and swing our arms to one side of our body, inhaling as deeply as we can. Then when we've filled the inhale, we're going to pause for just a second and then swing the body vigorously to the other side, saying ha. And as you say ha, just let out any kind of tension or anxiety, anything that's no longer serving you today, just let it go. You can ha as loudly as you want. And then we'll once again inhale and hug the switch side. So we'll start, inhale, pause, ha, 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 and once more. Feel all four sides of your feet rooting into the mat. Feel your, your weight pouring down through your body. Feel how you're just filled with prana, life force. Take a deep breath. And now we'll take our arms up and we'll go to 
the opposite side, inhaling, and then exhaling. <sighs> Inhale. <sighs> a little bit closer so they're about hip width apart and that means that your hips are over your knees and your knees are over your ankles. Your toes are pointing toward the front of the room so that we're protecting our knees. Now we're going to go do another um, active isolated movement, stretch movement and this time we're going to stretch the backs of the legs, the hamstrings particularly because uh, people are doing a lot more walking and things in the spring. So we're going to begin by take a nice deep breath. Bend your knees. Shift your weight slightly toward the back of your heels and let your buttocks move toward the back of the room as if you're sitting down in a chair. Bend forward. Place your palms above your knees. Now we're going to straighten the right leg by pushing the calf muscle back toward the back wall. And then we're going to shift, bend the right knee, straighten the left knee. And move through this active isolated stretch from side to side at your own pace. But keep continuously moving. Stretching out the soleus muscle, the gastrocnemius muscle. And then both legs back with the knees bent. And just allow yourself to kind of fall forward. Keep your head a little shake, yes. A little shake, no. Tractioning along the back of the neck. And then with the palms on the knees, gently push yourself up. Standing. Sweep the arms out to the side. Bring the palms together over the head. And very gently look up at your thumbs. And then inhale. Turn your palms toward the outside and exhale as if you're moving your arms through the water. Once more, we're going to bend the knees, shift the weight slightly back, and sit down into the yoga pose called Utkatasana, or fierce pose. Place your palms. This time, we're going to straighten the right leg. But at the same time as we straighten the right leg, we're going to put the left palm just above. The other hand is going to be hanging loose. And as we straighten the right leg, we're going to bring the right arm up. And then we're going to hold it for about a second and a half. And then we're going to shift Bend the right knee, straighten the left leg, right palm on the left thigh, bring the left. So move through this particular side to side motion oh, six to eight times at your own pace, but 
keep working fairly rapidly. And you might notice that each time you straighten your leg, the muscle stretches just a little bit more. And then when you're ready, come back to standing, mountain pose. Just close your eyes. Let your breath come back to normal. Good to inhale deeply. Bend the knees. Shift the weight back into Utkatasana. This time we're going to take the left palm. I'm going to bend down and put the left palm somewhere on the right leg, down at the ankle if you can, at the knee. And once again, turn the arm up. And also just gently turn the head to look at the palm, and then the head back down. And then shift to the other side, and go back and forth in this Twisting motion, bending and straightening the knee. So we're engaging the muscles of the shoulders, the neck, the back, hamstrings. And come back to center. This time, take your right elbow in your left hand and take your left elbow in your right hand, and let the weight of your hands just pull you gently forward. Take a moment to take one deep, full breath. And release your hands. Place your hands on your thighs. And use your hands to very gently bring yourself up. So we're going to go one, through one more sequence in this particular pattern. We're going to root deeply into the feet. See if you can feel all four corners of your feet, both sides of your heels, the mound by your big toes, the ball of your foot by the little toe. Bend the knees. Do Utkatasana. This time we're going to place the left palm on the right ankle, straighten the right knee, and the right arm is going to come up and come forward as if we're doing the crawl, the swimming stroke. And then switch to the left side. You can allow your hand to set the direction for your face, or you can simply keep the head looking down at the mat. And then when you've had enough of that, take one full deep breath and forward bend and then use your hands to very gently roll up to stand. <coughs> each week from a series uh, created by a man named Baxter Bell, and this is the pose that he's created for this particular week, and he said he was inspired to create this pose when he went to a birthday party, and it was a three-and-a-half-year-old who told him that she did yoga with her mother every day, and he said, what's your favorite pose, and she said, Arpa Octopusana. <laughs> He'd never heard of it, and apparently this little kid was making up her own yoga. Arda means half, and 
and octopus salad means octopus pose. So this is called the half octopus pose. So what we're going to do is sit with our feet, knees bent, feet out, arms out straight, grab onto the back of the thighs, and roll back to your sitting on the back of your sitting bones. Straighten your legs. You may recognize this as Navasana, bow pose. But instead, we're going to open our legs, open our arms, and then move like we're an octopus and see if we can keep our balance. Hmm. If you want to make it a little bit more challenging, you can bicycle. You all have excellent balance. <laughs> okay, and then we'll come back down. Just stand back up again. Chair. And I think, yeah, that's perfect. Put your chairs like that. Now we're going to use the chair to do a little bit of static stretching, which is holding the stretches for a little bit longer, up to 30 seconds. Now our muscles are nice and warm, so they're able to stretch to the mat the maximum without uh, other reactions, say, don't, don't, don't. So the first thing we're going to do is just kind of shift so that you're sitting with your hips at the back of the chair. Inhale. And bring your right foot up onto the chair. Wrap your arms or your hands somewhere around your knee and pull on your knee so that you're causing your spine to straighten. Feel your crown lifting. Pull your knee into your chest so you're feeling some constriction in the hip flexor. So bring your awareness to right in between in your body. And now feel how incredible it is when you release the foot. And this area fills with oxygen and fresh blood. Inhale and bring up the other knee. Hug it into the chest. Feel the spine straightening, feel the head lifting, feel your crown shining up to the ceiling. Feel the compression in the hip flexor. So all around your hip joint, blood is now pooling, stopping, and picking up toxins from the cells. Now as you release the leg, the old blood is Rushing away from the hip flexor area, which is being flooded with fresh blood, fresh oxygen. So now we're going to take the side of the chair, switch to the side. And you may want to turn your chair so you can see. <clears throat> Good to inhale, take the left leg, bring it up toward the chest and then turn it outward. Make sure the ankle bone is on the outside of the other leg. Flex your foot, protect your knee. Inhale and just drawing lightly, pull your leg toward your body as you rise. Feel your spine lengthen. And then exhale and fold down. And when you get as far as you wish to fold, just let your head come down. Make sure your foot is flexed. And then come back up. Take both palms onto the back of the chair. Inhale and on the very on the exhale, very gently twist your torso around, let your head turn and look over your shoulder. 
Take a deep inhale. And then exhale and turn back to word. Center. Down. And then we'll turn to the other side. Opposite hip is against the back of the chair. And if you forget which side you've done and you do the same side twice, you won't, I guarantee you won't walk out with one leg longer than the other. But. Okay, so now inhale the opposite leg up. Make sure that we flex the foot. Pulling lightly on the foot and the knee, fold forward. When you fold it forward as far as feels comfortable, let your head drop down. And as your head and neck drop, you may feel a stretch along the hip where the leg is bent. And come back up. Place both palms on the back of the chair. Inhale deeply and then exhale and slowly twist. And then back around. Just stand up. chair to the side of you. This you can stand sideways on the mat or you can put your chair on the floor. As long as a little bit of the metal is on your mat, then it won't slide across the room and send you in the dance you might not be wanting to do. So just give yourself a little shake. Feel all the weight in your body pouring down from the crown of your head, down your spine, down into your feet. You feel really solid and really stable. Inhale and bring your right or your leg that's closest to the chair up onto the chair. It's sort of a ballet dancer pose with your toes pointing toward the back of the chair. And now we're just going to do a short little isolated, active isolated stretch where we rock back and forth. chair to hold on to it as you hinge down. Take a deep breath when you bend as far as you wish to bend. Inhale, exhale, and then on the next inhale, fill yourself with energy and come up to standing. And bring your foot down. chair, take the other leg up, same gentle rocking motion, back and forth, and then with the hips facing forward, Inhale and slowly come down, walk down the leg and the leg in the chair. Bend your knee of your standing leg if that helps. And then come back up to standing. Come down to a seated position. One leg in front of the other. And place the chair so that when you fold your arms like 
this and lean forward into a supported child's pose that your forehead is resting on your forehead. Feel as if your hip bones and your tailbone are sliding backward on the mat, stretching out the length of your spine. Feel your inhale going deep into your belly. Place your hands behind your back with your palms on the mat, your fingers facing toward the back of your room. Very gently inhale, lift your heart and see if you can feel your shoulder blades moving closer together across the back of your body, your collarbones spreading wide and your heart lifting. You can keep your head tucked toward your chest or very gently lift your head. Deep breath. And on the next exhale, come back up to city. Change the crossing of your legs so whichever leg is in the front, take it to the back. Now take your arms. We're going to put our shoulders into an external rotation. So carrying our shoulders for a downward facing dog. So we're going to place our hands on the seat of the chair with the thumbs up on top, so your thumbs are on the top of the chair, and your fingers are wrapped around the seat of the chair. If you lift your fingers and then wrap them, you can feel how this is opening in the shoulders and it's changing the rotation of your shoulders. Now we're going to do the famous yoga bum walk, which is we're going to walk ourselves backwards on the glutes until your arms are straight, taut. We're going to inhale and then exhale and just let the head, the torso, chest come down to more than that. You should feel a really nice stretch in the shoulders across the back. Let the head be heavy, hang. You can release the back of the neck, nodding yes, gently no. Gently let go of your feet, slide your palms back out. Now we're going to 
roll onto the back. And without hooking yourself on your chair, inhale and bring your knees up toward your chest. Hug your knees to your chest. And very gently rock from side to side, just massaging along the spine. center, let the knees move toward the ceiling and your feet are flat on the mat. And just let your knees drop from side to side as if your knees were giant windshield wipers. And this is relaxing any contraction or tension that we may have created in the lower Back to center. Staying on your mat, scoot yourself toward your chair so that you can put your legs up on the chair with your knees bent. And have a look in this position. Take your arms out to the side at about a three degree angle. Feel how the center of gravity is shifted in your body. Feel how your lower back is beginning to sink down into the mat. So it's making more contact with the ground. The muscles along the sacrum are relaxing, lengthening. Now we're going to move into the final pose of the practice, which is Shavasana, or Corpse Pose. So you can choose if you wish to stay in this position with your legs on the chair, or you can just very gently look up and use your legs and kind of maneuver the chair out of the way. It's often more comfortable. So we'll lie back. Spread your feet so that your legs are just a little bit wider than hip width apart. And let your toes roll in towards each other. And then let your toes roll out toward the outer wall so that you're rolling back and forth on the heels. Your feet are flexed, not pointed. And we're relaxing the lower leg muscles that we worked earlier. And then just let your toes fall so they're pointing to the outside walls of the room. Have your arms out at about 30 degrees from your body with your palms facing down on the floor. And then very gently roll your palms up toward the ceiling. And then roll them back down toward the floor and then back toward the ceiling. Roll your palms a couple of times and feel how, as you roll your palms so they're up and facing the ceiling, how this is opening across the collarbones. It's opening the heart, relaxing the shoulders. And then let your hands fall soft and silent, facing up toward the ceiling. And then very gently begin to roll your hands head from left to right and then gradually let your head come to stillness let your head find its own place of balance close your eyes feel your breath deepen and begin to move your body, from the nose to the heart to the diaphragm, and then back up and out. Feel the 
weight of your body sinking into the mat. Feel the heaviness of your muscles and your bones. Feel how you are held. Imagine for just a moment that your body is made of balloon material. That your skin and your shape is a giant balloon. And on each inhale, you're filling the balloon with life force, with light, with energy. unfolding. Feel with each inhale, your body is empty and spacious and luminous, filled with energy and light. Feel your breath entering your nostrils and traveling down your body, down your torso, down your legs, all the way to your toes. Begin to wiggle your toes as this breath and life force brings energy to your feet. Make little circles with your ankles. The next inhale, feel the breath and the life force filling the lungs and moving down the arms out toward the hands a little bit of dancing movement to the fingers. Feel this life force, this energy tingling and moving all through the body. Feel your legs, your torso, your neck, your face filled with energy and vitality. Bring your feet together so that your big toes are touching. And on the next inhale, bend your knees Bring your knees up to your chest. Wrap your arms around your knees. Give yourself a nice squeeze or a yoga hug. Very gently begin to rock from side to side. And then when you're ready, rock over, roll over onto your right side. Make a little pillow for your head with your lower arm. And just take a moment to feel the energy moving through your body. Take a moment to feel a little bit of gratitude for this amazing life that's moving through us. Gratitude is a skill. Now very gently using your hands and your arms, push yourself up to sitting. See if you can let your head be the last thing to come up so that you keep the relaxation in your neck. Inhale our arms out to the side. Turn the palms up. Bring them together. And using your thumbs, just pull lightly up on the skin, opening the heart, opening across the collarbones. We'll inhale, and I think we'll chant OM three times together to end the class. So inhale to chant OM.